I want to thank uh, Bhaskar and Analytics uh, India magazine to have me here. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I'm going to talk, like she said, about manufacturing. It's really close to my heart. I've spent uh, quite a bit of my time in manufacturing. And uh, people say, I mean, it's cliche that change is constant. Uh, I personally feel it's a little bit inaccurate. It's the pace of change which is really constant. And that's what has been driving most industries. Uh, manufacturing is, as we all know, slow to adapt this pace, but it's there and, and it won't be far uh, catching up with others. So I'm going to actually try and bring to bear how manufacturing is changing, how we have uh, experienced some of these changes and have been part of some of these changes and how it can very soon become autonomous. Uh, we are in the fourth revolution, fourth industrial revolution as they say and uh, that's being driven by convergence of lot of lot of technologies uh, and, and what is next is autonomous manufacturing, autonomous industries. Uh, it, it's going to happen because we have got what I call technology tsunami really coming up and meeting us right in the face. We have got uh, augmented reality, we have got smart robots, We've got uh, various other techniques, but something which is really driving this change at this very fast pace is AI and ML, and that's why we are here. By the way, I should, I should share this. Uh, this is kind of funny. Uh, when I first uh, got to know uh, about machine con, uh, because a lot of manufacturing and machine is still with, with me, and I'm a mechanical engineer by training, I thought, well, machine conference has to be manufacturing. And that's why this topic. But then I realized it is, it is, machine is much more than manufacturing, much more than something which just gives mechanical advantage. So I'm going to start uh, with a few examples. But before that, what is autonomous manufacturing? Autonomous manufacturing is something which is not just sentient, not just self-aware, but it is uh, acting on its own. Uh, it, it starts with augmentation, uh, with automation, but then what starts coming after that is insights, consulting, advice, and then act on those advice. I think that is that's been, for, for a long time, a holy grail. Uh, and it is still not done. We still have to walk several miles before we reach there. But it's fast coming. Let me give you a few examples. And the first one I'm going to talk about is about steel industry. By the way, I, I rolled steel, uh, flat steel products for several years. And that's why it's really dear. Uh, to my heart. So, I suspect a lot of people here would not even know how steel is manufactured, uh, but if some of you know, please pardon me. I'm going to take 30 seconds just to give you a perspective of how steel is, is manufactured. Uh, you have iron ore, you have coal uh, mixed together, molten iron is there, goes into something called blast furnace where impurities are removed poured into uh, steel converters where uh, alloying is done and then slabs are uh, fabricated and rolled into steel and this steel manifests itself in several appliances, several cars, uh, several refrigerators and whatnot. So it is such an integral part of today's life uh, 
That is why I thought I will choose one example from there. And to top it up, you, can get, you cannot get more traditional than steel. Uh, started several, day, uh, several centuries back, uh, the whole manufacturing of steel. Uh, but the pace at which it is changing now is, is really uh, humongous. So, uh, I'll touch upon steel with three aspects. And, and any manufacturing, by the way, is, is kind of the broadly can be divided into these three uh, things. Production, quality control, uh, maintenance. Now, obviously, there is the whole supply chain around it where you have to get orders, you have to get demand uh, recognized, uh, and then you have to distribute. Uh, this is a real example that we've been doing with uh, with one of the global steel uh, manufacturers. Uh, it is about transforming their steel mill. Uh, we, we actually looked into their production, uh, looked into their uh, quality, and looked into their maintenance. And as we speak, uh, there's a lot of transformation that we are helping them achieve. Uh, I, I would actually say it's, it's disruptive. Uh, so we, we boarded them, onboarded them on our platform. Uh, which could link all the customers. Uh, manufacturing no more is as rigid as it used to be where you would produce based on how your, uh, your manufacturing sequence would allow you to and not bother so much about demand. Uh, they were facing a lot of issues around fulfilling orders and we came in to help them. Uh, we onboarded them, like I said, on our platform uh, which would link their customers and the entire ecosystem. And uh, it, it actually helped them improve their fulfillment by almost 40%. So they, their, their uh, fulfillment went up more than 95%. All this was possible uh, because we had a lot of uh, artificial intelligence embedded into that platform. We, we would actually, so we deployed several chatbots across the entire uh, supply chain, which would automatically consolidate orders. In such a traditional industries, uh, you actually will see that the orders come sometimes even not through electronic media. Uh, so these orders were consolidated. Uh, there were uh, natural language understanding, uh, which, which would try and query the system to come up with the right priority of uh, manufacturing these orders. And then it will go through the production plant. Automatic scheduling based on, uh, based on which order needs to be processed. And since this is a continuous manufacturing, uh, it is that much more difficult. You can't stop the mill. You can't stop the furnace to actually get, uh, get a different, different specification of steel slab being manufactured. So you have to make sure that, is, that it is all seamless. But in the end, it was made possible. But uh, so the next one, the next in this cycle, what we did was, how can we take care of the quality defects? The cost of poor quality that they were having were roughly around 100 to 150 million, and, and that's a huge number, especially in, in an industry like steel or in a company like, uh, like theirs where they were running on a razor thin margins. Uh, again, we, we took help of IoT here, uh, converging with a lot of uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence technique. Uh, lot of their machines did have sensors, but they were not so well connected. Uh, we help them connect the sensors across the plant. Uh, we actually asked them to deploy cameras, which were put, uh, uh, so, so this mill would be around two kilometers long, right from furnace to the coiler. Uh, and uh, we, we installed some 20-odd uh, cameras across, which would take, they were high-resolution cameras, which would take pictures as the bar moves across. And those pictures were real time being examined using, uh, using computer vision. And uh, the, uh, the insights were given. In fact, we then took, to, took them to the next level where we started uh, 
predicting based on the input material coming from the steel melting shop, uh, the specifications would actually help us identify defects ahead of time uh, so that you don't have to stop the mill. Uh, in fact, one of the problems that they were facing was that, uh, so think about a steel mill where there will be heavy rollers and 1100 degree centigrade uh, bar is actually going through the rollers. Now, you have to come up with a 1.2, 1.1 mm thickness of a bar. So, uh, the, the slab would be just size of this and it will actually roll up into couple of kilometers of, couple of kilometers of a, a bar. Now, if there is a defect, you got to catch it early so that you don't stop the next bar coming uh, just behind it. And you just have few seconds to decide that. Humanly impossible. So earlier people used to just stop the mill, kick the bar out of the table, get the next bar. Lot of loss. Uh, we, we actually started predicting it so that before, they, before, the fur, before the bar used to get out of the furnace, you would realize whether this is rollable or not, and you would actually get the next bar. Uh, we, we brought down their cost of poor quality and, and as we speak, we are working on that. The third one, one is about maintenance, the third use case in this. Uh, you, would, you would stop the uh, plant and to restart the plant, it takes almost 24 hours. Loss of production. Uh, we started by helping them predict the failures of the machine, uh, which is, by the way, which has been prevalent all this while using historical data. But then with the advent of IoT, we could real time identify. So take for example, uh, there is a hydraulic system which drives these machines. Uh, if by looking at the parameters and using the advanced analytical algorithms, you can predict the failure of uh, any of those walls or uh, something which is going wrong with the temperature of the hydraulic oil, you could actually act in time. Not just that, you could reschedule the, uh, the mill. So if the mill has got seven stands, and it actually has uh, sometimes seven to ten stands, uh, ten, uh, think of a stand as a roller, roller uh, you can probably dummy one of the rollers and still roll 1.1 for some time, although it will be more load on the plant, uh, but it's better than stopping the plant. So those kinds of prognostics uh, did help them improve their uh, productivity and their throughput. So that was, that was about steel. Uh, another traditional uh, industry, which is oil and gas. So oil and gas, oil exploration is a very costly affair. You've, you actually have to monitor the return on assets which are there uh, in, the, in the oil field. Uh, this is about a use case where you, while exploration you do drilling, and when you're doing the drilling, uh, you, you actually have to be sure that you're going in the right direction to strike oil. So the way it works, uh, or it used to work uh, a few years back, people would uh, stop drilling, take the soil sample out, measure, uh, take it to the lab where geoscientists would actually, uh, what they call visual core analysis, uh, will, will take out and try and identify the porosity, the gamma, all the different parameters of the soil, uh, what they call lithology prediction. And based on that, would then give recommendation to the drilling group that whether to drill in the same direction or change direction or maybe change location totally. Uh, we all know that today's uh, equipments are now embedded with several sensors. Uh, these sensors give real-time information, terabytes of data uh, coming out of it. Uh, we helped uh, this, this company actually through, uh, again, uh, some deep learning algorithms to dive into all the historical predictions that geoscientists would have made, compare it with the real-time information, and then and there give them 
recommendation uh, so that they can decide whether to drill rather than stopping drilling, whether to drill in that direction or through automated guided vehicles move the location and go drill in some other location. So uh, that was uh, about this and it actually uh, helped them improve uh, several million uh, barrels of oil, improve the productivity by several million barrels of oil. Uh, third one, uh, this is about a wind farm. Uh, it's, it's actually uh, in Europe. Now, uh, this is uh, using reliability analytics, uh, using IoT, and obviously machine learning. Uh, we help them predict the failure uh, of the wind farm. And we've taken them to a level where uh, they actually gained 90 plus productivity. They, it's, it's completely automated, where the running of the farm is obviously automated, controlled from uh, the pulpit by just one, uh, one operator, but the maintenance has become now on demand. Uh, the algorithms were st structured in such a way that they could uh, interact with each other and identify defects, and through a chat bot, uh, go and raise an alert with the field team, field maintenance team, and sometimes even guide them into what is the root cause of this particular defect. I think it was, it was an amazing move towards uh, autonomous manufacturing. So these are the few examples uh, which I thought are uh, very useful in us understanding how we are going to autonomous manufacturing. And it's, by the way, I, I must admit that it's not easy. Uh, there are several impediments, several hurdles. Uh, what you see on your screen is one of the factories burned down in, in uh, it, it was, by the way, an automatic factory. It was burned down by somebody hacking into the system. A huge risk, huge security risk. Uh, I believe a lot of you guys would have heard about a robo uh, getting hostile in Canada and uh, uh, that robo killed one worker. Uh, I personally feel really sad about that. But mind you, uh, US Army is using autonomous fighters. There are fighter planes which are autonomous today. And if such a critical thing can become autonomous, I'm sure factories will become autonomous and there's a right direction which I think everybody is going in there. You've got so many things. Uh, this, this one, I'm sure a lot of you guys know, there is, uh, there is this company called uh, Deep Knowledge Ventures, uh, which has got a robo on its board, and it, it has got one vote as, uh, as some of the other directors. And there are certain things which they have identified where the robo has got a veto. So things are moving fast, and uh, I'm sure we'll get into autonomous manufacturing very quickly. <laughs>